Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are going to be checking out a brand new Defender 110 by Iceberg and some of the really cool aspects of this mod itself. Now, one of the coolest things about it is the fact that even though this says Defender on the front of it, since it's being used on a PC, the console versions do not have that branding. Now, I will leave a link in the description box down below to where you guys can check this mod out, but with that being said, though, I do want to also let you know that the PC version will have have more add-ons available than the console versions due to RAM limitations once again. Now, currently, we are out here on a uh, Cascade Springs map, or I should say the Cascade Springs map, and we're going to get this thing into the garage, we're going to customize it, and we're going to see what all can be done to it in terms of not only appearance, but also performance, and then we're going to take it out and use it on some back roads and some trails and on some obstacles. So let's fire it up and get it in the garage. It's also the odd occasion where the garage is directly behind me, so I was like, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna just back up. So let's go ahead and head straight into the customization. Now, you start with a 2.5 liter 200 TDI turbo diesel, which is gonna be a B power to weight rating. The next engine up is gonna be an A, and the next engine up after that is going to be an S+, so we're definitely gonna go for that. Now, gearbox-wise, you start off with a 5-speed LT77 general purpose transmission, but you can also go for a 4-speed crawler kit or a six-speed highway transmission, or a four-speed automatic. Now, let's see. I'm going back and forth on whether I want the close ratio crawler box or the four-speed ZF. I'm thinking I want the four-speed crawler box, and if it's too slow, even for this map, I'll swap it out for the ZF. Now, let's see. Suspension-wise, we have the crawler-tuned lift kit, we also have the balanced kit, and then we also have the raised or just essentially just basic lift kit. So I think we're going to do the, I think we're going to do the crawler kit. That should give us the most suspension travel. Now, tires wise, we have a 35 inch wild peak, which by the way, I don't normally see the wild peaks in, um, in snow runner. And in fact, those look like the wild peak AT, which is really interesting. Let's see. We've got another AT, although that doesn't necessarily look like any BFG AT I've ever seen. That looks more like a BFG MT. Now let's see. We also have the ML814 mud terrain. We have the Cooper Discovery worn out, and we also have the brand new Cooper Discovery. And then we have the Yokohama MT mud tires. Now, these are an odd tread pattern that I don't really recognize. We also have these trepidors. We have grapplers, trail grapplers. Yep, Nitto trail grapplers. And we have the chained Good Day. And I suppose you guys know what the Good Day refers to. Now, I think for this build, I think I'm going to run the... I think I'm actually going to run these uh, these Coopers. I've never really spent a lot of time with these Coopers on any vehicle, but they look really, really good on this thing. Now, the Autonomous Scout Extended Winch requires you to be rank 5, which I am not on this particular map, but I would be on any other map, so that's not really a big issue there. Now, spare wheel-wise, I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel carrier on in the back, and then we'll do the stock spare on the back as well. And then in terms of the snorkel... Let's do, yeah, we're going to do the high, like the really highly raised snorkel. Now, let's see. Defender roll cage. What about the, oh yeah, roof access ladder. And then we'll do the cage itself. And that will give us access to the overland roof rack. Now, let's see. Rear bumper wise, we have the Dominator. We have the Inferno. We also have the stock option one and stock option two. And we also have this one called the Vengeance. That one is very, like, tucked up underneath the back of the vehicle. Now, rock sliders. Let's see. Wow, you have a big variety of rock sliders to choose from. I really like these gridlock ones. Those, those look really good. Now, let's see. Whoa, cargo supplies. So, let's see. Small boot supplies and fire extinguisher. Let's see. Pickaxe. Dude, what? Shovel. Let's see. 20 liter jerry cans times two. We've got recovery boards. We've got... Whoa! Rhino recovery boards. We've got a large... Wow! Large supplies up top. That comes with another spare tire. And then, let's see. Flat webbing tow sling. We also have a thick rope that can wrap around the roof rack itself. Heck yeah! That's delightful. We've also got... Whoa! A radar unit, which is actually basically a CB radio. That's so cool. We also have other stickers that can go on this thing. Dude! That's... Okay... That's, that's pretty awesome. 
that's pretty freaking awesome now front bumpers wise we have actually a good oh dude that one the vengeance front bumper beautiful it's got the uh the flush mounted winch it's got the light pods it's got the little spotlights on the side that's that's really really good now let's see custom tuning let's see headlight lamp grill i don't know we'll put those on and let's see cb aerial extended fender flares i don't know if we necessarily need the extended fender flares but they're pretty cool now let's see land rover mud flaps bro Bro, this is so cool. All right, hood protection and whoa. Oh, wow. Suitable for driving at night? Okay. And then, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. There's one more. Side door guards and then there's branch deflectors, which apparently that requires another add-on, but the Dominator bumper. Okay. Now, lighting-wise, LED halo light and dual front LED light bars, which we'll definitely want. And then there's also one massive light bar that you can go with. Or you can do the tubular uh, roof lamps, which I actually like even better. And then there's also a rear LED pod that we can throw on there. And then let's see, new wheels. And then we can go ahead and set the color up. Now, I really like this dark green. I think the dark green looks really good. I think red looks good. I also really like kind of the tan. I've seen a couple of defenders in this color and they look incredible. Now, as far as the rest of the colors go, I like the uh, almost like a... Uh, it's almost like an off red. You know what I mean? I, maybe that's like a, like, maybe that's a weird way to describe it, but it's kind of like almost like a weathered red. Now, in terms of bobbleheads, let's go ahead, because we already have a CB radio that doubles as radar, so we don't need the uh, bubble darm. I'm going to go ahead and throw beans up there on the dash, and now we have a fully customized defender that we can set off with into the trails. I am so excited to see how this drives. I, I am genuinely pumped to see how this drives. What's the interior look like? Dude. That's so sick. I love this. Wait a minute. These seats. These look like Recaro Sportsters. Maybe I'm wrong, but they look very, very, very similar to Recaro Sportsters. Not saying that that's a bad thing. I think that's really, really cool. The Recaro Sportster is a really cool seat, but like, wow, that is like... That is not a detail I was expecting to see. And you know, the four-speed crawler box is not that bad. Especially when you get up into fourth gear, it's nowhere near as slow as I was, like, worried it might be. Because when you're in automatic mode, you can still definitely roll out with this thing. Now, let's see how this thing flexes out. Oh, dude, you can already see the suspension travel starting to happen right there. This is definitely going to be for the people that are really interested in some very realistic... Uh, realistic vehicle behavior that isn't necessarily just crawling like it can do crawling for sure however like it'll be able to go into mud it'll be able to go into snow it'll be able to go wherever you need it to go without really compromising all that much and really that's the whole point of the defender as a vehicle in the first place it's literally it was literally designed to be able to go through muddy backwoods trails like this one and through the desert and down the highway. That's literally the whole point of the Defender. And I think that this vehicle, or this mod, I should say, does a wonderful job of getting that personality across into the game and into the player. Now, let's see if we can... Dude, the approach angle there didn't even, like... It didn't even flinch at that. And look at that flex angle. That flex angle is sick. Like, it's got a lot more flex than you might think it would, even though it's not, like, insanely high lifted. And keep in mind, it's also only on a 35. Now, some of you might be saying, what do you mean only on a 35? A 35 is a big tire. Well, there's a lot of different, like, there's a lot of different levels of, like, what is considered a big tire and what isn't. It's all subjective, right? Like, some people might consider a 35 a big tire, and some people might say it's not even a medium-sized tire until it's a 42. So there's always going to be some level of subjectiveness when it comes to what tire people actually consider to be a quote-unquote big tire. But really, I think a 35 on a Defender is definitely going to be more than enough to go down most trails that you're going to encounter in the first place. Unless you're getting into some super gnarly rock crawling, it's not going to be an issue for you. And even at some really ridiculous angles, this thing is holding its own quite well. And not only is it holding its own quite well, but it's staying very well balanced. And the center of gravity is tuned so well, so incredibly well. Descending down the backside of that peak now, it's getting a little bit more uneven, but even then, like, the, like, yes, there's body roll, but the suspension is so, art like, literally, it's so articulate that by the time 
you know, by the time you would start to lean over on the body of the vehicle, the suspension has already sorted that out for you. It's already done all of that flexing and movement for you. And you really have nothing to worry about. Well, that barreled into the ground, though. I did not see the line there. I didn't realize that it was such a deep hole on that part of the trail. A little bit unexpected there, but not, not really a big deal. The interior view is also absolutely next level. The interior view is tremendous. Let's actually activate the radar and see if it does anything. Oh, actually, the center knob on that radio actually turns. Oh, that's so cool. And it worked. Wow, look at the actual area span that that radar unit discovered. That is a very powerful radar. I mean, that radar unit is extremely powerful. And look at that. Once again, it climbs through there with absolutely no issue at all. Like, it literally took zero issue with anything that we've thrown at it so far. Now, granted, this map does not necessarily feature the toughest trails out there, but what's cool about these trails is that these are the kinds of environments that a vehicle like this, a Defender 110, is going to be used in the most. Now, could you take it rock crawling somewhere like TNB Trails? Absolutely you could. But could you also take it out to a default map and use it to explore an entire campaign scenario? Absolutely. Could you also take it to, like, a desert map and use it as a desert scout? Absolutely. You could literally do whatever you want with this thing. And I also have to say, I am very impressed with the grip levels it has in the mud, considering that we are on a 35-inch tire and not, you know, even like a 38 or a 40. Like, this is not, in the grand scheme of a lot of trucks in this game, this is not a massively tall tire. And it is just digging in and shredding in the mud. And I, I could not be happier with the driving experience that I've gotten out of this vehicle. Like, if you are looking for something that is fun to drive and yet balanced and yet also very realistic and yet also very highly detailed, this thing absolutely cannot go wrong. It is such a wonderfully done vehicle, and I had an absolute blast taking it for a spin. Wonderful job, by the way, by Iceberg and his team. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.